WEMF, presented by the Sound Museum Boston. Welcome, welcome. Young Jerks. Live on WEMF Radio. My name is Mike Can, and his name is... Frank Capone, how are you? Doing all right. We're getting ready to go to war today. A little we bit, are. Frank. We're going to go to war. Well, before we get to that... we got a lot to talk about today. We're gonna, we get a lot, we have, we only an hour. We're going to cram a lot in. Um... And uh, so we've got some people calling in. We've got all kinds of stories to talk about, so let's get right in there. 617-500-7100 is the number if you want to call in. Uh, we're just following the uh, Outlaw Road Show with Ryan Spaulding. That's right. Good local music show. Uh, actually, I think it's national music, too. I mean, he just, any type of good music and drinking. And whiskey, yeah. And whiskey. It always smells the sweet perfume of whiskey when we walk in here afterwards. Yeah. It goes from uh, distilled spirits to other kind of spirits. It's a riled spirits. On our show and the next show coming up after us, uh, Smoking in the Girls' Room. And oh, definitely yeah. we're going to get into Market Basket today. I'll be sitting in maybe uh, for the first part of this show, be the one man on that show. Oh, yeah? Yeah, talking about Market Basket today. So we're definitely going to get into that. That'll be one subject. Also, and we're going to be talking about uh, the events that have been going on in Ferguson, Missouri. That's probably and, what uh, we'll be fighting. Yeah, that's that's going to be the... Uh, Mike and I take a different take on this, and, and, and I see where Mike's coming from, but I don't think Mike is really meeting me halfway. But we're, <laughs> we're going to get there. Yeah, we don't um, really need to get there yet. You know? And uh, so we've got... Uh, Kelly Owens going to be calling in uh, from Missouri, who has been there, um, was right in the thick of it. Uh, a video that I posted on my Facebook page that I'll share on the Young Jerks page later of her around the front line getting gassed by the by the police. So excited to have her on, and uh, she'll be reaching out to us in, a, in just a bit now. And also, we want to talk about uh, someone we've had on this show. Good guy. Yeah, brought his campaign vehicle out, which was very cool. Yeah, <laughs> it was. the other old thing wrapped. And we still have a bunch of his flyers in the studio here, which is, you know, you can see EMF... Uh, it, it, we have we we always have a table, promotional table, where anyone in the community that comes up here can leave their flyers, their CDs, their stickers, and it's nice to see among all the musicians that Evan Falchuk's campaign lint is still here all these uh, weeks later since he came in here, and yep. people are checking him out and supporting him, and he's starting to do well in the polls. We're seeing uh, he's running as an independent, created his own party, United Independent Party is what it's called. Um, I did not know this, but uh, apparently his grandfather was Venezuelan, and I've been noticing that he's been speaking to many Spanish uh, community groups and doing quite well there. In Lawrence, Latin American he, community yeah, groups, yeah. He he did this thing in Lawrence recently. I just saw one of his videos, and the and the place went crazy. There was thousands of people there, and uh, you know I just didn't see this about his campaign, and he seems like he's doing really well. And one of the things I like about him, and you know, it, you know, obviously he's very intelligent. He's been successful at business. He's put in over a million, I think it's almost $2 million in his campaign, just like one of his opponents, Jeff McCormick, who's also running as an independent. Mm -hmm. So I like all these things about him and that he you know, also supports the legalization of marijuana, Evan does. But what I didn't expect is for him to be going after Jeff McCormick over you know, something that has really been bugging me about Jeff McCormick's campaign, as well as the campaign of uh, Charlie Baker. And it's about immigration. It's this whole, um, you know, I'm just going to quote Evan Falchuk. He, um, he's talking about, now he's not talking about Charlie Baker on this, but he's talking about Jeff McCormick facing him in a debate. And he says, uh, you willfully chose not to be aware of what was going on with this policy, Falchuk said. The whole situation is bigoted. I'm not saying you're a bigot, but you're using it for political gain when you post it on Facebook, 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 and talk about how many likes it got. Yeah, and I've been we've been seeing this like this whole um, for, you know, Frank, you were a delegate for the Re Massachusetts Republican Party at the last convention for president. Absolutely, uh, you know a lot about this local political thing. It seems like there's a real uh, kind of debate in the Republican Party about. Which way the party goes, whether it goes towards the Ron Paul, the youthful enthusiasm that we saw, or back to this red baiting, racist, you know, bigoted, because that's what it looks like to me. Um, the immigration thing is is complicated. I'm yeah. not on one side on this, but the right wing side is really well, hateful. I, I mean, pretty much from my experience, you know, getting dirty with the Republicans uh, was that they're all you know, anti-immigration, you know, I, I, I can't say that I ever met a Republican that, you know, was like, oh yeah, you know, these folks, you know, 
struggle, you know, through the desert to come here and, and then work hard and send money back to the families. I never heard that, you know. It was always, those people are taking our jobs and, you know, they're on the welfare and this and that and the other thing. So I think that's something across the board, um, at least with the, the folks that I met and the, the, the circles that I rolled in, that, uh, you know, even the Ron Paul people, the Ron Paul people aren't pro-amnesty or anything like that. I mean, they think that the people should, you know, be deported back to their countries. They don't yeah. think that they should be, you well, know, I mean, let to stay or I anything like that. I think you can't say that about all Ron Paul people. Well, no, I mean, that's a, that's a there. wide, that's a wide, yeah. it's true, but like I'm saying like the, I don't know what the, the proper the core. word, the core of, exactly, of, of a lot of the and folks. The diehard, the, the people who are most into it. I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I see it too. Yeah. And, um... You know, I, I think, too, with the Ron Paul people, they're at least a little, you know, even the the, the, the die hardcore that we're talking about that maybe we don't agree with it all the way. Um, I think at least they're more open to solutions <laughs> on, on looking at why people from Mexico are coming here in droves and from Central America, why are they coming here? It's, you know, based on the economic uh, and the drug war and the drug war. Yeah, no, that definitely are you that's true. Policy? That's very true. I I, I overspoke there. I think a little. I mean, bit. that's my big issue with someone like Jeff McCormick and Charlie Baker. It's like they just want to focus on the symptom, but not actually present any kind of solution. Well, because it riles up their base, you know, and it, it's it's just it's like all about Facebook likes. Yeah, like the the debate between um, what's his face Sullivan and uh, Baker that they had on NPR. Like I think it was last week or the week before last. You know. I mean, they're doing the same thing. They're just riling up their base, riling up their base. In was order it Coakley to get... and Baker, maybe? No, no, it was Baker and... Um... Oh, the F- Jeff Fisher? Fisher, excuse me. I said Sullivan, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Fisher. Yeah. That's sued. You know? Yeah, I mean, he's he he's red baiter, too. I mean. Oh, my God. Well, Ridiculous. Even... Ridiculous. And, and But Charlie's, like, throwing those, like, half-liberal, you know, digs in there, and then, you know... The other guy's going full tilt. We're saying that, you know, he's just basically Republican light, and he might as well be a Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the other thing? I mean, I, I, I got to hand it to Evan Falchuk. And, and this is one of the things that bugs me about uh, what's going on in the world right now. You know, if you sit on your Facebook page and you post about how you hate cops and you post murder after murder after murder that cops have committed, you'll get 150 likes every single post. You post something about Evan Falchuk and talk about, like, a solution. Here's, here's a guy who's actually got a plan. He's got a campaign. He's got money. He's even got a celebrity factor with his brother, you know, being... Uh, the guy that is he producing the, the that producer, show, Glee, yeah. Glee yep. and now uh, oh. uh, allegedly dating Gwyneth Paltrow. I mean, this guy has a lot going for him. He's also got the Latino thing going for him. Yep. Um, he, he's he's a very intelligent. And he's a good dude. He yeah. sat here across from us and Answered was a regular person. And it's funny, too, because when he was sitting here. But no one cares. And he talked about debating, right? Yeah. He was excited about the like, debates were like his favorite thing. It. He's like, as they all just sit there and give platitudes, and I just smile and wait for my turn to talk. And bam, there he is right there in action, which is awesome. Yeah, he didn't want to leave. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he stayed in the park a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like, we were like, when's he going to leave so we can smoke some weed? <laughs> I mean, you know, like, he was really cool. And, and that's the thing, though. But no no one, no one, like those same people who are like all angry about the cop situation. Where are they? Where are they for the good candidates when they run? Because I'm so sick of people saying there are no good candidates. It's like, no, there are good candidates. People just don't vote for them. Yeah, and it's it's hard too because a lot of times you know the regular media, which is where most folks get their their information. Why do you from, need the regular media you know? though? I mean, that's, I don't need it. You, you don't necessarily. No, I don't. It. You, I don't watch it. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> like, wake up. Most people do, you know, and and most people they they go home and you know, they eat dinner and they've got seven news on or some news station on and that's where they're getting their information from, you know. Um, people don't necessarily go on Facebook to, you know, talk about politics. I think the folks on Facebook that talk, talk about politics a lot of times, I bet I've got like 900 friends. I bet you most of those people have blocked my posts by now and I'm yeah, really only know. seeing stuff that is, is, you know, liked by the same 15, 16 people every single time. Not to mention the algorithm too that, that helps to, you know, fight that on, on Facebook. And especially like, uh, I think when people are into politics, they're just so into their one channel. Well, yeah, that's it's a, just that's it's a thing just too. about like I want I want to hear about how the immigrants are all stealing our jobs exactly, or even the weed issue for me. It's like that's all I want to hear about. I just want to hear about how we're going to legalize weed, which you know I can kind of relate to that because I'm one of those folks that focuses on that issue a lot. But uh, I just don't get it. Like there are so many interesting things going on in the world. Oh yeah, I mean, why are you focused on the negative? Like like I want to ask all these people when I see these posts about the cop situation that we're going to get into. Do you hate cops? Like, do you want to kill cops? Cause that's then. And, and, and once I get that answer, I want to know where do, where, where do you expect this to go? Yeah. Like, do you look at like 
the long-term goals of your life and what you're spending your time on. Like, where do you want this to go? Because I don't see it going anywhere. But uh, we, that's a different... Like, that we're going to get into that, that is a little different. bit. We're, we're priming the pump here. Oh, what else Push it we three got? times and then pull the lever. I mean, we also got Bank of America, a $17 billion penalty. Oh, yeah. They should have been putting out a business. Just getting slapped on the wrist People should bit. be thrown in jail, these banks. AIG, people mm-hmm. should be thrown in jail. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's a, you know... And I, they still fall close on people. It's a crazy thing. Like, the uh, U.S. You know, citizens paid for every single foreclosed house in this country. Paid paid for it. Underwrote it. Un- underwrote it. Right? And then they still kicked people out of the house and took the house back after they already gotten the money from the American people. Perfect. And the, and the thing is, it's WEML Radio. Trying to get some bumpers going. But, Sorry about that. Uh, hey, we're that's under, right. hey, that's, uh, We haven't even mentioned that. We uh, didn't. We got big Rob Kaufman back We do here. have Rob Kaufman. Behind the board. How you doing? Hello. Long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. Good to have you on our show. Yeah, it is. It's, fun. it's nice to have you back. It's fun to listen. I miss your musk. I miss your beard. <laughs> <laughs> I like your shirt too. NWO. Thank you. And that's not for the New World Order like conspiracy theory. That's for like wrestling, right? Yes. W C W. Yeah. Yeah. I love that stuff. That was WWF. I thought New World no, World. no. WCW. That was WCW. I think it went over to W. Yeah, yeah. No, it it's went over to WCW. Over. Yeah. That's when I actually watched wrestling. It was. Well, it was like an invasion. It was an invasion. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Kind of They're like, hey, stuff. guys, let's work together for a couple months. We'll get some ratings for everybody. Alex Jones here. stole it from... Uh, it was like Coke and Pepsi. Alex Jones stole it from... <clears throat> George Bush. Yeah, from from Hulk Hogan. I mean, people have been talking about our New World Order for, so we got a, for a we got a time. phone call. We're going to take the phone call, and uh, we'll also get to uh, the Boston Herald. we got to talk about Miss Cohen. Oh, my God, that lady's insane. But let's see who's on the phone first. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to the, the thing we're going to argue about. I think that's what's going to happen. Hello. Hello. Hi. You're on air. I was okay. I was told that you wanted uh, personal stories of those who were in Ferguson by a friend and decided to jump on air. Well, thanks for calling. What do you got? Absolutely. So uh, I've been on uh, the ground in Ferguson since Saturday morning, and uh, it has uh, gone from America's war zone to a fairly peaceful city the past couple nights. That's that's good to hear. So people are are back down the riot. Police aren't out in force. Just folks are just marching around and and being peaceful. What really happened is the police have finally decided to back off, and because the police uh, and the militarized obviously response has been backed off significantly, um, people are also maintaining the peace out here. Cool. And why did you decide to go to Ferguson? Where are you from, and you, why, why did you go down there? Uh, originally, or I'm from uh, Toledo, Ohio, so about eight and a half hours away. And the reason I'm down here is I started um, People Against the NDAA, an anti-militarization organization. Oh, dude, I've been watching your live stream. <laughs> really? Yeah, dude. <laughs> okay, well, that's me. That's awesome. <laughs> um, are you talking- so yeah, I just, just can't. It was a little garble. Was it uh, NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act? Was that what you're talking about? You're against that? That's, that's correct. The yes. Patriot Act. Uh, well, Somewhat. It's, it's Patriot Act takes takes your phone, and they can listen into your phone. The NDAA takes you and sends you to Guantanamo Bay. There you go. So, uh, <laughs> slightly different, but, um, you know, it's essentially the military operating on their own citizens on U.S. soil. And uh, to be fair, the only difference between the military and the police these past several nights has been ones under the Department of Defense and ones not. Uh, and and with that, the only difference that we're dealing with essentially the NDAA down here in Ferguson. And so you, I was watching your live stream. It was one of the ones I was, and you were right there in the thick of it, right? I mean, so you uh, had to deal with the tear gas. You, um, you know, saw folks get arrested, um, you know, down there. Uh, did you did you see any of like the, the the bad stuff that the media's been talking about? You know, like say like the looting or like you know bad actors over there or any sort of uh, say agitators or agent provocateur type stuff going on over there. You know, I didn't personally see any of the looters. I did see residents standing outside of businesses preventing them from being looted. Uh, I did see you know the big problem became on Thursday night. Captain Johnson took over. Uh, from the local uh, police chief. And uh, Friday, the police decided that if the residents didn't want a military response, they were going to get no response at all. 
So they just decided not to respond to calls uh-huh. in person. And so that allowed the looters to run wild. And so you've got this outside criminal element that, you know, most of the people arrested have been from outside the city. And uh, they have been basically from actually St. Louis proper. So uh, there's an outside element that comes in here, but the crowd does a very good job policing itself. In fact, if you look on Monday night, you'll see the crowd locking arms and pushing these violent agitators toward the police to get them out of the way. They've done a very good job policing themselves, particularly the past couple of days, as they've realized it's necessary and as they've gotten better at it. The crowd has done a better job policing itself when the police have generally stayed out of the way. With all with all that's going on, all these um, this kind of action, we get, we have more calls coming through too, Frankie. Just oh, awesome. let you know. But uh, with all this going on, what do you think people can take from this and can actually hope to see happen to uh, improve conditions in this country? Take the lessons learned from Ferguson and uh, take them to your local city council. Take them to your local town hall. Take them to your local Republican or Democratic Party meeting and uh, push to prevent what happened in Ferguson from happening in your community, whether it's through policy, whether it's through notifying the police chief they'll be fired if they do this or whatever. Do, do it in your community instead of just thinking, well, it's a Ferguson issue. Awesome. Well, hey, I really appreciate you calling in. Tell us one more time what the name of your organization is. People Against the NDAA, PandaUnite.org. Awesome. Thank you so much for calling in. We'd love to have you on again. Uh, looks like we're going to pick up our next call. Hello. Uh, you're, you're on uh, WMF Radio. How are you? Hello. Hello, hello caller. Do you, have, do you have the show uh, on the background? You should turn it off if you Yeah, do. if you have the show on. It's just like real radio. you got to shut it off. Um, I don't have the show on in the background. Oh, cool. All right. Can you get us on speaker? Or we just, you sound like you're kind of far away. Uh, I'm on my headset. Ah, okay. All right. So what's going on? Are you calling from Ferguson? I am. I'm on the on the street right now. No kidding. Share, the, share, share your experience with us, please. Um, so uh, you may have, you know, if you're paying attention to the issues down here, you may have noticed me on the news. Um, I'm Billy Moreno from uh, Austin, Texas. The um, I, I traveled up here and was arrested three times uh, Monday and Tuesday and singled out by Captain Johnson as an outside agitator. Um, uh, is he wrong? Was, uh, is he, <laughs> yeah. hey, wait, wait. Is Captain Johnson wrong? I mean, why do you guys make me support the cops? I mean, come on. Like, what is were he you wrong? Doing? What you just he... told me you're from Austin, okay. Texas. Why did you get arrested three well, times? We don't even know what he was doing. Well, he got arrested three Let's times. Let's ask him so, first. Uh, it's just, it's just yeah, like a setup. You're setting me up. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell us about okay, it. Okay, so, so here's what I was doing. In each of the three arrests, during the first one, I was walking up and down the street, um, uh, walking up and down the shopping centers along along the avenue, um, stopping in with the store owners to see if there was to get contact information so I could pass on relief funds to them potentially after I left here. I've been raising money um, that I was looking for places to to give to from my social network, okay. and so I was doing research on how to spend that money. I was actually in a conversation, just started a conversation with about my fourth store owner in a row. And during that, I was approached by police and asked what I was doing there, uh, told I was a person of interest, and arrested for the first time. Um, later that what, night, what, were you char- uh, you know, they pro- what was the charge? Go ahead. What was the charge? Uh, failure to disperse. Did they give you any warning? No. And in fact, I, I mentioned that to them because... You know, and I'm not trying to get arrested. I, sure. I'm over here just trying to help out a difficult situation. The people are trying to do something very difficult here. And and I've been going around and just providing support. Not, I'm not even protesting. I'm just, like, helping them, yeah. you know, whatever they need, sure. trying to keep their spirits up. And I told the officer, you know, this is the first time today that I've been directly or in a group that was addressed. Uh, and at that point, he told me I was a person of interest, um, you know, before proceeding to... Uh, tie me up and, and detain me and take me back to the station. So what happened after that? Tell us about the second and third. I mean, that sounds pretty... Okay, so uh, they, I was released very quickly. Um, I actually spent more time in the van on the way to the station than I did there. They processed me, put me back out on the street. I asked, I, I told them, you know, I was, I was going back and I asked if 
you know, what I needed to do to not get arrested. They informed me. Um, I came back uh, that night about nine o'clock. Um, this is this is Monday night this past week. Uh, Sunday night, I had been in the crowd that was that was tear gas bombarded with tear gas, and you know I hadn't planned on being here past curfew, but since the, the bombardment happened at nine o'clock, I didn't really get that choice. So I spent the whole night, you know, like not only seeing what was happening from the police, but seeing how the crowd was reacting, helping people out of the tear gas, helping people like not escalate, not give the police give police the excuse to like go go even more over the top than they were. Um, so I, at that point, I had kind of made a resolve to be here at night and help in that especially critical time and keeping the crowd kind of focused on, on the task at hand. So, I, you know, I'm going around handing out water, um, just checking in with people that seemed like they were getting especially upset. Um, and that was how I spent my evening. When I was arrested at about 12, 12 a.m., um, the police had decided to fight, that they finally, you know, there was a small group, maybe about 100 people compared to what was there earlier in the day. And they had decided that they were going to find, uh, like make a final push and arrest and move all of these people out of the area. Sure. When I saw them moving in in the crowd that I was trying to help keep moving away from the police at police instruction, I turned around, put my hands up, and just started yelling, they don't know where they're going. So I knew I was going to get arrested because I was stopping um, and, and kind of singling myself out. But I felt like that needed to be communicated to them, if at all possible. And so you got arrested um, again for failure to disperse? For, again, for failure to disperse. Okay. So uh, what about the third fact, one? During the third one, it was, it was a very similar situation. Um, in these late evening hours, um, starting around 9 or 10 o'clock, police would really start... They were out in force and would really start pressuring the crowd, you know, making the crowd move, um, sending in, uh, you know, groups of 20 officers to um, snatch up and arrest someone that they had singled out for being aggressive or, you know, for doing anything that called attention to them. And, and this tactic, like, served to, you know, really dis disrupt and confuse and, and bring a lot of attention to the crowd. And a lot of us were working very hard to keep the crowd, you know, peaceful and, and focused on the task at hand, moving where, where police were telling us we needed to move. At this time, we were working on moving the crowd to the designated protest area. And as we were doing that, we reached a point where we were no longer able to move because we were surrounded on all sides by police. So the crowd was just there. And I'm, you know, I'm going around checking in on people, trying to keep everyone kind of calm, as calm as can be. And, and, and I'm around the outside edge of the crowd. And at this point, police move in and quickly start arresting many, many people. Instead of targeted arrests, they just started scooping people up. And I was, uh, I was tapped on the shoulder, asked over to the side, and um, they asked me a few questions. Uh, you know, what was in my bag? What was I doing there? And w while they were arresting me, I overheard one of the officers in the area say it was my third time. They knew they were arresting me for the third time. They knew who I was. Um, I felt really targeted at that point. Um, later that evening, Captain Johnson in a press conference singled me out as, not by name, but he talked about the, you know, an outside agitator from Austin, Texas, who had been arrested three times. And I felt really, my, I felt my safety threatened. I felt like the police were really, like, trying to use me to make a point that was really uh, trying to divide and conquer uh, a the A political crowd. point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now, do you have any plans to maybe sue them at all for these arrests? Um, I've talked to a lawyer both because I'm looking for protection and, you know, it does seem like there's something here. Um, I can't really go into detail because I don't know where it's at right now, but I am talking to civil rights lawyers and, and figuring out what the situation is. Where do you think this, um, where do you think this, we gotta, we gotta, um, let you go, but we, we, one quick question. Where do you think this goes from here? What, what are the end results from this whole thing in Ferguson? So I think the end results and what I'm seeing now as these, you know, the last couple of days have been peaceful is a lot of people in the community are taking what they've learned from this experience 
and and figuring out both, both what they've learned, the connections they've made, the strength they've found they have, and they're figuring out how to turn that into into political action, into local action, into you know, into community building, not just looking at the police and the and the officials that are working with them, but like what can they do in their own community? So they're looking at all these things and trying to take this energy, and I th- I think it's going to be very promising. I think at some point the police will be part of that solution. You know, as an organization, I don't know if it's with any of the people that are currently staffing the, the police. So you don't, do you don't hate cops? I'm sorry? Like, let me ask you a question, because I, I, I see a lot of people that are focused on this issue hate cops. Do you hate, you, you, don't, you don't hate cops? Uh, well, one, I think it's unfair to like to just say they hate cops. I think there's a, a lot going on there. You know, there's, there's sure. a, a lot of trust and, and emotion there, uh, distrust and emotion there. But, no, I, I understand that, like, there is going to be law enforcement. You know, that's part of a working society. I understand that's going to be. And I don't even hate, in, you know, individuals that are working in the system now because the system makes them function in certain ways. But I do think, like, the way cops are now, both on an individual level and on a systematic level, is going to need to change for trust to be maintained, for cops to be doing the right job in, in the whole system, to be playing the right role. And, that, and that's exactly what, we're, the, what, what I'm trying to say. And uh, we thank you very much for calling. Um, and, uh, you know, stay safe out there. Don't and, get arrested uh, yeah, again. Yeah, try not to make it a fourth time. But if you got to... actually. I, I, yeah, I'm doing everything I can not to be arrested. I have one, um, one more question. I, I like your attitude after you get arrested three times. <laughs> you don't hate cops. I like that. <laughs> did you uh, did you get hit with the LRAD? I forgot to ask the last caller. What's the LRAD? Yeah. It's that uh, noise machine, I, right? The, the thing that makes I, the high-pitched whining noise. It's a sonic boom yeah, weapon. Yeah, I noticed it. Um, I, I actually, when I heard it, like, it, it's not so loud, you know, it's not like a loud thing that, like, makes you do anything. So I was confused about what it was for, and someone told me that there's a low-frequency part that, like, just kind of disrupts you psychologically. Yeah, it rattles uh, your brain. I didn't notice any effects of that. Yeah, I didn't know any effects of that. Um, but, so they were but, using yeah. it, but it wasn't turned up all the way to the point where, like, you, you couldn't function. I, I, I was able to function, but I found that, you know, even in the stress of the, the tear gas bombardment, I was functioning at a very, like, in the moment, calm yep. level, was yep. able to stay with my purpose. Cool. Um, so I, I can't speak for everyone in terms of what results they had from that. Fair enough. Well, hey, thank you very much for calling in again. We appreciate it. And uh, stay safe out there. Oh, well, too. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, we're the Young Jerks here on WEMF Radio. We haven't even really gotten in a fight yet. And we haven't even really gotten into a fight yet. It's because we're not talking about the 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 actual all the red know. red baiting all, all the uh, stuff that I see on Facebook about the case. Yeah, I and mean, that's what that's what bugs me. There's people on both sides, and it bugs me are, too. Are, are throwing up fraudulent stuff that's not even true. They're making judgments, making accusations, assumptions, with no proof. It's like let, let's figure out what no actually matter happened how here. Hard you try- <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that, Can't that's stop a us good now. song, though. That is a good song. That, that might be a if, teaser for yeah, the next song coming up. If we uh, end up uh, breaking there, but yeah, no, I mean, there, I, th- it's true, you know. But I, I, I feel like myself throughout this whole entire thing, I've been posting stories, you know, that have been factual, that have you know retorted other people's nonsense, you know. And I, I, I myself, I'm like looking at it and I'm saying, okay, well, you know. You have a clear violation of people's rights happening with the protests, you know, but then in the front end of it, you have an 18 year old kid that got murdered, you know, and you have no Wait, wait, that's statement number one. Correct. Statement number two. You you don't have the proof. If you, you kill someone, say, you murder them. You, no, no, no. You just said murder. Yeah, murder. Murder. I don't know it's murder by law. Law, um, law says if someone tries to hurt you and you defend yourself, that's not murder. And that's where I'm saying, like, you, this is where you you've mur- already made the judgment. Murder them. You've already defense. made a judgment on this. So killed is. Do I have to use the word killed? Are you no, be I, would, I, I would. I would just say that you know, like, I don't know what I would say on that yet. He had, like, that's my point. Like, we're, we, everything is decided in this world now. By the press, by the people, before we even have a trial. Before well, the, we even gather the evidence, before we even know, people already, this guy killed that kid. I mean, essentially, he already was kid. the jury. He's an, um, uh, 
and the ju- and the judge. Who is the the police officer? Well, I mean, you, you're giving weapons to cops to defend themselves, and, sure. and that's the idea of it. And it, when they use a weapon to defend themselves, now now you're saying that they're, they're execution and murderers. Like this is this doesn't jive. This is not logical. You don't need to defend yourself from somebody that's you know ten fifteen feet away from you. Yeah, but that, how do you know? I mean, that's, Wait, where's that's your from, where's that's your that's from my where is reports. your evidence? You I mean, we had one reports. guy come back. This Baden guy. This this great doctor and your side is pointing. Oh, this proves his murder. And the doctor's word said could have been ducking down and charging. Could have also been standing up. Yeah, and he had said that it wasn't up. clear. No, we in the story it, says it wasn't clear. We Absolutely. need more evidence. We need more. Like you know, one of the best things on this, hopefully, that comes out is that from now on, police officers will be recording everything. We need police. We need oversight. We need access to the, the recordings. There was no recording. If well, we yeah, had the exactly. simple recording, we'd all know. If there was but a there wasn't can, a recording. It wouldn't be a problem. So your side is focusing on eyewitness testimony that has been proven over and over again in court of laws to be unreliable. But it doesn't matter. And we still don't have all the evidence. I mean, you we still you've, haven't you've even got, got we you've have, got six or seven people that are saying the same exact thing that don't oh, know one another. Eyewitnesses, you know, eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses. Well, yeah. The, uh, I mean, what what else do you want? I mean, do you, I, I want the I want the real evidence to be gathered. But what presented. is the real evidence? Eyewitness evidence is like, real evidence, like ballistics, like uh, the autopsies, like. Sure. Like the real, you know, the, uh, what do they call? The, you know, you, the, I watch CSI. We know what this is. The uh, gunpowder residue. Yeah, there was no uh, gunpowder residue uh, found on Michael Brown. So that means that no, he no, shot no, from no, within no, the, no, the, the Look at what Abaden said. said. Look, no, the this autopsy is again. Said, report said there was no signs yeah, but, of a struggle. The, yeah, again, this is what I'm no, talking about. You, you're what do you taking mean? that this is what as you're talking about. I'm not taking it as proof. I'm saying that there was you, no gunpowder residue on him. Frank. Frank. What do you mean? No, hold on. Let Frank, me finish. That, no, 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 this is no, exactly no. what I'm talking about. You, exactly. You're not even letting All me, the evidence hasn't been collected yet, and you're pointing at one little thing what and shade it in your way. How am I shading it in my way? You are because you, 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 this little piece of little, 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 tr- whatever the, the most it's trivial a, little it's item. It's not trivial, dude. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely not trivial. Yeah, no, you have no gunpowder residue found on him. You have no sign of a struggle found on him except for the scuff on his forehead from hitting the friggin' ground. Those are those are facts from the autopsy. The same autopsy that says he may have been had his head down, ducked down, charging, or he may have been standing there with his arms up. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same autopsy. So I'm pulling it from the the same evidence that you're pulling it from. Uh, what what I'm trying to say again, and I'm going to state this again, is I don't have all the evidence. I haven't gathered all the evidence. The government hasn't even gathered all the evidence. You have two or three different investigations going. That's not enough. You you have to prove the case yourself. Well, let's wait. Let's wait on Frank Capone and see how he figures it out. Like there you go. that's I what might, you're doing. I might sleuth like, it out. You you know you you know it's like you you have no there is all this little cherry picked little information. Keep going. Let's you know. But in the end, will there be a conviction of this guy? This no, guy? this guy's not getting convicted because the the rules in Missouri basically say that you know. So where if does it cop, go? If a cop feels threatened, then you can basically that the cop can summarily you know kill the person you know based off just any sort of like like say if I was drunk right and you pulled me over to traffic stop okay and you pulled me out of the car and you handcuffed me and I trip backwards and I bump into you because I'm drunk. That's enough reason for the police in Missouri to shoot me dead and get off. Like, so there's an inherent problem with the law in Missouri. And I, I hope that if nothing else, that that gets changed. So police can't summarily, you know, just kill people and decide they're on the side of the road with no dash cam footage. I mean, you're dealing with, yeah, there's no federal laws on that dash cam footage. Yeah. No, no, there's no federal laws. If a cop just should kill somebody from, well, it's state law, yeah, no, there's there's absolute state, but you have to the federal. You think the federal government's going to take the case up? Did they take the take the 400 other cases up where the police were involved in well, shooting? They've taken a lot of cases, you know, up over the years. Yeah, they have, but not any of the ones that that I've heard about. You know, I mean, you've got you've got shootings all over the country. Well, that's where what police, I'm talking about. You've know, you got shootings all over the country where police are murdering kids. You know, white kids, black kids, Dogs. Asian kids, I, I know, retarded but, kids. You know, or mentally challenged. Excuse me. You know, what's your answer? What are you guys doing about it? I mean, what Protesting am I doing Protesting in the street, it? posting uh, cop suck, and well, what, let's well, kill the cops. You know what? Let's just, let's, just, let's just go to work and pretend it doesn't exist. How about that? Let's just drink Let's just drink our Kool-Aid, and we'll go to work, and we'll pretend none of it exists, and then everything will be okay, because the police are here to protect us. I'm not doing that. You know? 
I think I'm working with politicians. Uh, well, that's the exact that's same thing I'm doing, but you're trying to rope me in with, with like, I'm running around saying kill cops, well, no, which I, isn't I, what I, I'm doing. I see, I see, I'm talking about the community that you're representing, that I see on Facebook. I don't see them at the city hall. I don't see them at the hearings. I don't see them supporting Evan Falchuk. I don't see them doing anything except saying, fuck cops. You know, I know we're not supposed to swear in the station, but that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. They're just saying, they're saying, F the police, F the police, pigs, calling them pigs. I mean, it's like, you know, when you're against the war, you're against uh, Donald Rumsfeld and George Bush's policy and Obama. That's one thing. But when you attack the soldiers and label them all killers and murderers, you've just lost a political war. There's no way that you're going to win that war. we got another phone call. We're about to take a break. Uh, I Why don't wait. we take I the call to attack that? <laughs> Why don't you attack it? No, let's take the call. Hello, you're on EMF Radio. Hi, this is Dan the Man. <laughs> Danny, we're going to uh, put you on hold for a minute because I know, we do want to talk to you about Market Basket and we're uh, no problem. into something else right now. Frankie, attack yep. it. All right. So the, the the fact of the matter is, is that like you're, you're trying to equate it to, oh, well, it's it's like support the troops, you know, you know, be against the, the people that are sending them out there. You know, is it the is it the policy of the Department of Homeland Security, which controls, you know, a, a police forces in this country to, to summarily execute people on the street? No, it's not. It's not the policy of the Department of Homeland Security to kill people in the street. You know, so I'm not going to go after, you know, the, the, the head of Homeland Security. Again, again, you just made another statement, person. Frank, that's like not based on fact. You're, you're, you're talking no, about you can, this one case, right? And you're saying that this cop summarily executed this kid. That's you, what I'm saying. And you don't have the full okay, evidence. Okay, fine. You can't even prove it in a court of law in Massachusetts. I'm not trying if to. If you could. I'm like not if, trying if it was, to. If this happened in Massachusetts, you would not be able to prove it. I'm giving you Whether my opinion. Whether it's Missouri or anywhere else. This is my opinion. Because it because you have no real proof. You have... That. I have the I have what I have, and I'm giving my opinion. Well, okay? when you, when you say someone claiming... was as summarily ex- executed, and you call that an opinion, first of all, that, I wasn't that's, even that's reckless. Speaking specifically, reckless. it's not reckless. Yes, it's it my is. opinion. Yes, it is. And my opinion isn't reckless. Yeah, it's I... what I think, and I can say what I think in this country, and not have to worry about the consequences of it. But the fact of the matter is, is that what I was saying was, it's not the policy of the Department of Homeland Security for people to be out, for police to be out in the street murdering people or shooting people or or, or not, you know, doing the best that they can to apprehend people without using deadly force. That's why they give them tasers. That's why they give them pepper spray. That's why they give them tear gas, you know? So they don't have to shoot people, you know? And so there should be a protocol that is taken, and there probably is a protocol that was supposed to be followed, you know, in most states, I'm sure there are, but with Missouri, like I had said, the threshold for a cop pulling out their gun and using deadly force is so low that this guy's not going to go to jail. He's not. He's not going to go to jail, and it's and it's and and to me, you know, I don't think justice is going to be served because it is my opinion that this guy took Michael Brown's life. That's my opinion. Yeah, and and I think that he may not have um, been at fault as much as you say. Number one, and number two, he could go to jail over this. He could be convicted, even though the, there is no evidence against it. And I think that's the sad commentary of the situation. But we, we should take a break. We should get into market basket. We went all at this, two different sides, Frankie. This is, I, I think there's a rush to judgment. I think people are so bent on emotion. And on the other side, too, that I've seen to be supporting today, them too. Oh, those I mean, people are crazy. I mean, I could, I, I, I'm going to post up something to the Young Joyce page where, like, there's people in the Support Darren Wilson page where they're saying that he was defending us from domestic terrorists. Yeah. Like, and that's why I don't like this whole thing. This is why I didn't even want to cover this today, Frank. Insanity. Because it goes nowhere good. Both sides are crazy. That's all I'm going to say. But at the end of the day, this it is goes the nowhere good. We have to have a conversation in order to find a well, middle Well, let's have ground. a conversation on a case that we know that actually something was really clear cut. Like there have been ones, like you know, the woman in D.C. where the cops busted down the door. I mean, no, there are cases. Oh yeah, the little baby. That's yeah. no, that's an awesome point. But like the little kid who got the, t- the we need the to go. Bang. We're way over time. You know? We're going to take a break. We're going to listen to some Rage Against the Machine. I think. Rob, what do go. you got on the music coming out? W E M F. Presented by the Sound Museum. Boston.